Ah, so here we are. And uh, on this video, I'm going to do what's probably, for me at least, one of the most interesting new features in Simplify 3D version 4. Um, and it's on their website as a couple of things. We'll have a look in a second. But uh, probably of all of the new features that I see in version 4, this is the one that um, most beneficial for some of the issues that I've had in the past with prints from Simplify 3D. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look. So as in previous videos are that I've made on version 4 of Simplify 3D, we are using Simplify 3D's website and uh, what's new in version 4 as the basis for it. And uh, so we've covered these first five items down to the dual extrusion customizations, which uh, I'm afraid I can't do because I don't have <laughs> a dual extrusion. So uh, yeah, we'll have to skip over that one. But we are getting to this one, which is, well, I don't know about the dual extrusion thing, but certainly so far this is truly the first thing in version 4 that was not possible in any way, shape or form in uh, version 3, really. This is something that really could improve the quality of the prints, uh, especially if they have lots of small details. Now, uh, they've split it into two sort of separate features here but they're both um, you know, become possible by the addition of variable width extrusions in version four. So let's say you have uh, nominally a 0.45 millimeter extrusion width. Well, uh, yeah, generally speaking in the old days, that was your width and uh, that was that. But now they seem to have figured a way of being able to reduce that width so that you can better fill in small gaps. So let's take a look at it. So I have dropped a particularly tricky and detailed model into uh, version 3 of Simplify 3D and uh, we'll have a look at how that gets on with some of this very fine detail. This uh, isn't really a massive piece, I think it's about 60mm in diameter. So you know, these are very tricky and small little perimeters and infills for it to take care of. So in version three, if we have a look at the process, there are a couple of settings in the advanced tab where we could deal with thin wall behavior. And the option was use only perimeters, uh, which basically if we have a look at that a sec and go into prepare the print, you can see that we have some uh, massive gaps in between where it couldn't actually fit a full width of a um, extrusion line in. So uh, it's just left it out. All of this is left out. So you're going to have big holes. So in version three, the way that they got around that was that you could have this gap fill. So if we have a look at the change that that's made in the preview, you can see what it's done is that it's done some wiggly little infills to try and fill in those blanks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reduce this down to a single layer so we can see the issues. Uh, well, let's have a look at uh, this area here. You can see that uh, because this little area here fell below what it could do with either um, an infill or a perimeter, uh, it's just left it out. So we still have some gaps in those areas. Now they do, and I've printed this before, uh, they do show up in the final print. It's a little bit harder to see when you've got the other layers on, but you can see this top layer here has no filament in that area there, and there are plenty of others where this is the case. On top of that, if we bounce out of the preview, you will notice that this little face thing here has some teeth. And if we go back into pair the print, the teeth more or less have finished. It's done some little blobs here, I don't know what they are. Uh, but because those teeth fall below what it can manage with the actual extrusion width, it has just had to miss them out so they wouldn't print at all. So let's see how this compares with version 4. In version 4, these new improved settings uh, can be found in the advanced tab again. And you'll see that they've completely laid out, uh, changed the layout of this area. So they've split it into two where we have control over the external and the internal thin wall types now. Uh, previously we would have only had this and uh, this or that, uh, which would give us the same result. Let's just check that out. If we go into prepare the print, 
you can see that we still have these gaps uh, where it's just trying to do the infill and uh, the teeth are still missing. If we come out and employ the new settings, so if we use single, allow single extrusion walls and allow single extrusion fill um, and go back into the print preview, you can see that it has filled in the majority of those gaps. There's still some little gaps here which it just can't deal with. Um, but the teeth are back, so this is much, much better. It's probably important to note that uh, the settings for the single extrusion, which are down here, the minimum printing width can be 50% of the normal width, which is, uh, where are we? 0.45 in my case. Uh, so yeah, this is a really a theoretical number. You could reduce that down probably to 1% or something in, in the actual uh, slicer. Whether or not it can print that in reality is something else. But uh, yeah, the option is there to give it a try. So let's have a look at the best that we could do in version 3 next to what we can now achieve in version 4, at least uh, theoretically in the slicer preview. So with version 3 on the left and version 4 on the right, we can see that it's been able to fill in these gaps here. It's done a much better job here and here. And uh, probably more importantly, um, it's given us some teeth down here, but it's also filled in all these little gaps. So I think probably the best thing to do is to try uh, a print or with each uh, version, version 3 as we've got here, and version 4 as we've got here, and see what the reality of this improvement is. Okay, so I have run off a couple of prints. Um, first one in version 3 of Simplify 3D with its sort of gap fill possibilities. And uh, then the second one with the single line extrusions from version 4. Uh, one thing to point out before I show you or compare those two prints that came out is that uh, I have in fact sanded off the very top surface of both of these. The reason being if you have a look at the tool head movements on the surface there you will see a lot of hopping and moving around and uh, because it's quite small spaces and there's a lot of movements with hops uh, you end up with quite a rough surface and for this particular print I needed something a bit smoother. So I have literally uh, carefully sanded off the probably about quarter of a mil maybe um, which is another reason why I did solid infill uh, just to keep it smooth um, which probably exaggerates slightly some of the gaps that you'll see purely because of that action of the head moving around and producing the top layer does cover up normally some of these gaps but anyway let's have a look at the uh, the badges so on the left we have the print that was done in version 3 and uh, as you can see there are some gaps uh, particularly around the bottom area here and on the right side and in this sort of crown area on the head uh, and probably more obviously the teeth are kind of completely missing I'm not entirely sure what it's attempted to print there <laughs> it looks like a tongue uh, but that's not how it should be and you can see that on the other side on the right side where version 4 is um, it's done a fairly good job of trying to reproduce those teeth even though they are in theory less than one extrusion width wide uh, and it's done a much better job of filling in all the gaps um, there are still gaps uh, visible as you can see in the other areas here but overall the there is a noticeable improvement in doing these kind of very thin walls and very small uh, gap fills so yeah, I think it's a very worthwhile change, update, addition to Simplify 3D. Um, it's something I'll probably just be enabling by default in all of my profiles. So that's it, and uh, we're going to be now moving on to some of the other features, and we'll get to those in the coming videos.